Hey y'all, Coach Ben Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the parable in the Shepherd of Hermas Similitude 5 about the vineyard. Yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, fasting a little and the cleanliness of the body. Well, we've already done the portion of the chapter on fasting. Right. We did that back when we did the entire series. But mm -hmm. thanks to one of our viewers, we were reminded that we didn't actually cover the part on the cleanliness of the body from similar to chapter five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this will officially be our last class in the series. So this is our last class uh, covering all of Hermes. Covering all of Hermes. You guys, if you um, haven't seen it already, we've done it a while back, but we've covered every verse in the entire book of the Shepherd of Hermes through these videos. Um, finishing up with chapter five today, these will be the last ones. And you have a playlist, right? Yeah, we do have a playlist. Um, you guys can uh, check out that playlist for those who want to join Hermes Academy. That is the curriculum, that playlist, as we step through the, like I said, the entire book of the Shepherd of Hermes, verse by verse, line by line, every jot and tittle is covered. Do you think we'll ever do another um, going through the entire book because, like you always say, every time you read it, you find something new. Yeah, I do think it'll be necessary to do the book again, only because we've learned so much from the first time. Right, and that was, what, maybe over a year and a half ago? That well, was way back in eight, nah, 2018 when Hermes mm -hmm. Academy first started, is when we first started those that series. Okay, so where are we going to start today? Well, we're going to start in the book called The Shepherd of Hermas. We're going to use um, Wikisource as our source to uh, look at a digital copy of The Shepherd of Hermas. Um, you see several different translations available there. I'll choose the William Wake translation because it is the oldest translation and it is the one found in the lost books of the Bible. And um, though the... Other, I think that's Lightfoot, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That translation is good, and especially the audio is good. I am finding that they, I guess, did not cover everything. Yeah. Well, the Donaldson translation, I believe, is the one you're referring to. Let me go back over there. You have the Lightfoot translation, and then you also have uh, this... Um, anti Nassim uh, translation, which was uh, translated by Roberts and Donaldson and, and looked like Crumble had a lot of people involved in that translation. Okay. So, you know, it, it's kind of all over the place. Right. But like I said, if you want to find the translation that's included in the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden, that's going to be the William Wake translation. Mm-hmm. And for those not familiar with the Shepherd of Hermes, you can find out information all over the web on this book, including how it used to be part of the Canaan before it fell out of favor with the Catholic Church, who decided to remove it from the Canaan. Mm -hmm. But we're going to come all the way down to Similitude 5. Okay. Now, I don't know if we're going to cover the entire chapter. Okay. Like we said, we've covered the part of yeah. fasting before. Mm -hmm. And we really want to concentrate on... The um, the parable. Right. So we'll talk a little bit on the fasting. But what I want to do is drop all the way down to where this parable starts and then start to read from there. OK, uh, let me just read the parable first. Then we'll use the text as a backdrop to explain what the parable is about. OK. A certain man having a farm and many servants planted a vineyard in a certain part of his estate for his posterity, and taking a journey into a far country, chose one of his servants, which he thought the most faithful and approved, and delivered the vineyard into his care, commanding him that he should stake up the vines, which he did, and fulfilled his command. He promised to give him his liberty, nor did he command him to do anything more, and so went into a far country. And after that servant had taken that charge upon him, he did whatsoever his Lord commanded him. And when he had staked the vineyard and found it to be full of weeds, he began to think within himself, saying, I have done what my Lord commanded me. 
I will now dig this vineyard, and when it is digged, it will be more beautiful, and the weeds being pulled up, it will bring forth more fruit and not be choked by the weeds. So setting about this work, he digged it and plucked up all of the weeds that were in it. And so the vineyard became very beautiful and prosperous, not being choked with weeds. After some time, the Lord of the vineyard comes and goes into the vineyard. And when he saw that it was handsomely staked and digged and the weeds plucked up that were in it, and the vines flourishing, he rejoiced greatly at the care of his servant. And calling his son whom he loved, and who was to be his heir, and his friends with whom he want to consult, he tells them what he had commanded his servant to do, and what his servant had done more. And they immediately congratulated that servant, that he had received so full a testimony from his Lord. Then he said to them, I indeed promised this servant his liberty, if he observed the command which I gave him, and he observed it, and besides has done a good work to my vineyard, which has exceedingly pleased me. Wherefore, this work which he has done, I will make him my heir together with my son, because that when he saw what was good, he neglected it not but did it. This design of the Lord, both his son and his friends approved, namely that his servant should be the heir together with his son. All right. So that's the first part of the uh, parable. Right. You know, it was just has this individual, this servant that's in the vineyard and he was given the charge to put a fence around it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not only did he put the fence around it, but he uh, actually went way above and beyond. Yeah, start cultivating and digging it out and different stuff, removing weeds and such. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's hear the rest of the parable. Not long after this, the master of the family, calling together his friends, sent from his supper several kinds of food to that servant, which when he had received... He took so much of them as was sufficient for himself and divided the rest among his fellow servants, which when they had received, they rejoiced and wished that he might find yet greater favor with his Lord for what he had done to them. When his Lord heard all these things, he was again filled with great joy and calling again his friends and his sons together. He related to them what his servant had done with the meats which he had sent unto him. They therefore so much the more assented to the master of the household, and he ought to make that servant his heir together with his son. Okay, so here's another thing this servant has done after he's taken up upon himself to cultivate the garden. Um, when the uh, master decided to bless him, right. he shared the blessing with his fellow servants. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wasn't selfish to keep it all for himself. All right. So this is the parable. Now we're getting to the explanation of the parable. Correct. So that takes us all the way down to verse 24. Okay. It says, and I said unto him, you want to read? No, you go ahead. Sir. I know not these similitudes, neither can I understand them unless you expound them unto me. I will, says he, expound all things unto thee, whatsoever I have talked with thee and shown unto thee. Mm -hmm. So you want to tell them a little bit about what's going on here? Well, the, um, the shepherd is getting ready to expound, um, well, I guess interpret the parable unto Hermas. Um, Hermas, um, is always asking him, you know, to to interpret it. And yet again, he's about to just tell Hermas what the parable is about to say. Yeah, for those who are new to Hermas Academy, you want to tell them about the shepherd? Well, the shepherd um, is the angel of repentance. And he is here, um, I guess, not only for Hermas, but for us to just teach us um, how to, I guess, enter into the kingdom and through repentance is um, 
the way that he is teaching. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about repentance. And the shepherd, like you said, is the angel over repentance. We learn in the other parts of the book that this is a very powerful, very important angel over the repentance of all of humanity now. Mm -hmm. Every, every, and it's necessary, you know, to enter the kingdom, um, you know, through repentance. Uh, repentance is necessary. So you have him here now who is actually talking to Hermes. Right. This is one of the first scriptures that we get to read where we hear directly from an angel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of the scriptures talk about angels and we may hear one or two things that they said. But this one, uh, the angel of repentance, he, he speaks in whole paragraphs, even whole books and chapters. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talking in here. Mm -hmm. And he's explaining to Hermes what Hermes needs in order to get into this tower that we're going to hear about later on in the book. Right. We won't talk about the tower in this class. Right. But, you know, if you go through the entire book or the um, um, playlist, you'll find out all about this tower which is the same tower that Peter told us would be made up of us who are these lively stones that will go to make this tower, which we refer to as the third temple. Right. So Hermes is like, hey, can you explain all this to me? <laughs> this is a neat parable here, but, uh, you know, if you don't explain it to me, you know, I don't know, you know, what good is going to do. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's jump into 25. It says, keep the commandments of the Lord. And thou shalt be approved and shall be written in the number of those that keep his commandments. But if besides those things which the Lord has commanded, thou shalt add some good thing, thou shalt purchase to thyself a greater dignity and be in more favor with the Lord than thou shouldest otherwise have been. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's just telling Hermas um, that not only do he have to keep the commandments, but there are other things he has to do as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we heard about this in the Third Testament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Third Testament talks about it a lot. Well, it says that, you know, once we learn to live within the law. Yeah. Then we actually get our life mission. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what it's talking about here, where it says first keep the commandments, you know. And then once you keep the commandments, it's telling Hermes, then you're going to do this greater work, which like the parable, the, the servant in the parable went on to start digging it. And removing weeds. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how we're, we've all, because, you know, most of us grow, came through Christianity, um, how we were told that we are not to keep the, the law. Mm -hmm. And so now we can't move forward. Mm -hmm. We're just stuck there yeah. when everything, including scripture, you know, the Bible is telling us that we are to keep the law. Yeah. So it's like we're stagnated by not keeping the law. Yet we still supposed to be keeping it. <laughs> yeah, we absolutely supposed to be keeping it. And, you know, I hesitate to talk on it because, you know, I'm a little bit frustrated. Um, but it it's absolutely necessary that we keep the law in order for us to move to the higher mansions. Right. And it's like some people know this and they interfere with that. Mm -hmm. Like the scripture said, they're like dogs who sleep in the crib with the oxen. Mm -hmm. You know, they have no intention of going to the kingdom of heaven. And they don't want to. And they, and they don't want, like, the, you know, the dog, he, he has no intention on eating that corn or that hay. Right. But he, he's on guard and he don't want the cow to eat it eat either. It either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so people who tell you not to keep the law are doing just that. They are actually trying to stop you from being elevated. Right. Mm -hmm. But like you said, that's not it. Keeping the commandments is kind of like the bottom line. The servant was given that as his only task mm -hmm. was to fence it in. Right. Right. He wasn't necessarily asked to do anything more. Everything else that he did more, well, he took it up on himself. And that's what it's talking about here. Mm -hmm. We have the job that we are required to do, which is keeping the commandment. That is necessary. There, mm -hmm. there is no choice in that. Mm -hmm. You know, but if we decide to go above and beyond that, then we're getting into this fast that, you know, this chapter is all about. Right. Mm -hmm. And right there where it says, and thou shalt add some good thing. It's talking about storing up our treasures in heaven. Yeah. And by doing so, we, you know, these are our works. Yeah. And we are right. judged on our works. Yeah. He's telling us that by doing more, you know, you're going to gain more favor right. with the father. Doing extra. If therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord and shalt add to them these stations, 
thou shalt rejoice, but especially if thou shalt keep them according to my commands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so we got three things going on here. Then you have him keeping the commandments, right? And then you have him doing these extra stations. Yeah, and that is talking about Isaiah fifty-eight. I'm doing fasting kind of stuff where you, you know, looking after your brother and helping, you know, your neighbor and you know. So, but he's talking about how you have to do so according to his commands, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, I wonder, you know, are they talking about the commands that we've just went through back there in a second? book of the shepherd of Hermes mm, possibly could but especially if thou shalt keep them according to my commands when you get back and look there's actually three books there's the uh, second book which is called mandates or commands mm -hmm. and that's probably what he's talking about there right all right verse 27 you want to read it verse 27 I said unto him sir whatsoever thou shalt command me I will observe for I know that thou wilt be with me I will, said he, be with thee who has taken up such a resolution, and I will be with all those who purpose in like manner. So this is really deep stuff here. Mm -hmm. You know, this is talking about how those who keep the law and take on these extra missions will have favor in all they do. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, it's kind of got, got to do some little bit of convoluted math here, but this is why our hands become blessed. Right. Is because we take on this extra work here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and I, you know, a lot of us, you know, we want these blessings. Talking about how we'll get everything we asked for and all of this. That's what he said. So, you know, this he's giving us instructions on how to do so. Mm -hmm. It takes extra. Yeah. Mm hmm This fast said he, while thou doest also observe the commandments of the Lord, is exceedingly good. Therefore, thus shall thou keep it. Notice how he keeps referring back to the commandments of the Lord. Mm -hmm. now, now, these are different than the commands that we right. just talked about. Right. So, mm -hmm. he talked about the commands in verse 26. Mm -hmm. And now he's talking about the commandments in verse 28. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are two separate things. Yeah. We find about the commandments in the first part of the book of the covenant, which starts in chapter 20 of Exodus. Mm -hmm. um, the book of the covenant goes from Exodus chapter 20, 21, 22, and 23. That's, that's, that is the book of the covenant that, but is in the first chapter of the book of the covenant that we hear about the 10 commandments. But then, like we said over here in the book called the shepherd of Hermes, we hear about the commands, right. which boils down to the commandments of yeah. The, the second era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it should have been included. This book should have been included in the New Testament. And if it had have been included in the New Testament, everybody would be familiar with these mandates mm -hmm. that we call commands. Now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But being that we, you know, all things is, has happened the way they have, we're going to have to go in and read these and learn these mandates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. 29. First of all, take heed to thyself. And keep thyself from every wicked act, and from every filthy word, and from every hurtful desire, and purify thy mind from all the vanity of this present world. If thou shalt observe these things, this fast shall be right. So this is Isaiah 58. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not not the food fast. Right. It's not, and he, he, that's where the chapter starts off. He starts, you know, chastising him on the, the type of fast that he's doing. Let's right. go back up there. Yeah. This, I think he says that this fast that you're doing is not one that the father, you know, takes joy in. Yeah. It's not really a profitable fast. Mm -hmm. It says there in verse two is profiting nothing with the father. And like I said, we covered that in that, that other class. Right. But this is talking more like the Isaiah 58 fast, which, you know, talks about. Let, let's jump over there and look at that. Okay. And one thing you notice over here in Isaiah 58 is how he chastises him once again about a fasting. Mm -hmm. Tells him that he's doing it wrong mm -hmm. in Isaiah 58. But then now here in verse six, he starts to tell him what a correct fast is. You're right. Mm -hmm. And it seems to line up with exactly what Hermes is talking about. Well, I think it does, you know, line up exactly um, what Hermes is talking about. And like you said, we cover um, this a lot in the previous class. So if you guys want to go over and look at the playlist of the previous class, you will um, get our understanding of um, the true fast that right. the Father desires. Yeah, and that's it. First of all, it's extremely important. And second of all, we've been doing it wrong. <laughs> mm, yeah. 
And matter of fact, the next few verses, um, all the way down to uh, verse 34 is all about fasting. Okay. And that's what we covered in that chapter. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to drop all the way down to verse 35. Okay. And I prayed him that he would expound unto me the similitude of the farm and the Lord and the vineyard and of the servant that has staked the vineyard and of the weeds that were plucked out of the vineyard and of his son and his friends, which he took unto counsel with him. For I understand that that was a similitude. Yeah. So a parable, something that is supposed to be a little bit harder to understand because it's extremely complicated. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, Im you can't imagine how complicated this parable is. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how much of it I should actually share with you. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, um, this is covered in the keys of Enoch. Third Enoch actually explains this in greater detail on a level of how it actually works. Mm, okay. So I'm a little bit hesitant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, overwhelm um, them. Overwhelm them is a good word because um, the information related to what's going on here is enough and more more than you want he is my you can go as high as you want as yeah. far as understanding this mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll try to keep our feet at least on the ground a little bit. <laughs> you keep your my feet on the ground you keep yours on the ground <laughs> okay so he's he's explaining the farm right right and i don't want to take the shepherd's thunder here but the farm we would think of it as the earth yeah um then you have uh, this vineyard, which would be us and mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. Then you have the servant who staked out the vineyard. Yeah. This, that's when it really gets deep there talking about the Messiah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the weeds. Uh, we're going to find out is the sins and stuff that he, that he removed from right. the vineyard. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to talk about these uh, sons and these friends who are these higher level angels. Right. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit and such. Right. Um, but let's see what he says. It says, uh, he said unto me, thou art very bold in asking for thou oughtest not to ask anything because if it be fitting to show it unto thee, I will show it unto thee. Right. Mm -hmm. So he said, you don't have to ask. Yeah. You know, everything you need to know, he's about to tell you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 37. I answered him, sir, whatsoever thou shalt show me without explaining it unto me, I shall in vain see it. If I do not understand what it is, and if thou shalt propose any similitudes and not expound them, I shall in vain hear them. Yeah, so Herman must not understand what he just said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The shepherd says, you don't have to ask. And Herman says, but I need to ask. If I don't ask, I don't understand. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, mm -hmm. you might need a little bit more instruction. <laughs> you didn't understand the last thing I just said. <laughs> I'm going to explain it to you, but go ahead. But they that are lazy and slow to pray, doubt to seek from the Lord. Although the Lord be of such an extraordinarily goodness that without ceasing, he giveth all things to them that ask of him. Okay. So now this, this is important to understand here because we learn in the third Testament that our father can teach us anything we want to know through prayer, mm -hmm. through prayer meditation, mm -hmm. right? Including his word and his scripture. Right. Right. And so even though there are people, you know, who may never heard of the book called the shepherd of Hermas, they still can get this information through intuition, mm -hmm. but they have to have this prayer. They can't be lazy in prayer else. They're going to block themselves out. Yeah. That goes for all of us. Right. Mm -hmm. And we learn also in this book, how doubtfulness is related to slowness of prayer. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Then, you know, you really start getting into harming yourself when you start to get doubtful right mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. this laziness of prayer is very hurtful but we find out here that you know it may be related to why a lot of people you know have a hard time understanding these precepts yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 40 thou therefore that art strengthened by that venerable messenger and has received such a powerful gift of prayer seeing that thou art not slothful why doest thou not now ask understanding of the lord and receive it yeah so and that's one of the things we try to teach on our channel is prayer right you know got a lot of uh studying in on prayer um a lot of research you know um you know a lot of people believe they already know how to pray i would i would i would bet that 99 percent of the people in the world believe they know how to pray and I'll bet 90% of them are doing it wrong, maybe 90%. Mm -hmm. 
Or more. Or doing it wrong. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, their prayer is ineffective. And you can, you can see so when they say a prayer, you know, about a, a car or about a house, and then they still yet end up down there at the loan office. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the prayers are yet still ineffective. So study some of our classes that we've done on prayer itself. Because it's necessary, especially if you want to get this higher level understandings. Yeah. And mm -hmm. even, you know, some of the promises, you mm -hmm. know, he promises to give us what we ask for. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to know how to ask for it. Right. Mm -hmm. 41. I said unto him, seeing I have thee present, it is necessary that I should seek it of thee and ask thee, for thou showest all things unto me. And speakest to me when thou art present. Yeah. So Hermes is determined to ask him. Then. Yeah. He's saying, you here. Yeah. <laughs> no, why don't you just go on and tell me? <laughs> you know, I ain't, I ain't necessarily got to seek the Lord. If you wasn't here, I would go to him. But you're here, so yeah. <laughs> let's get started. Yeah. But if I should see or hear these things when thou were not present, I would then ask the Lord that he should show them unto me. So he would do so through prayer and meditation. Mm -hmm. But he's like, hey, if you're going to tell me about it, then you could explain it. Mm hmm. And he replied, I said a little before that thou were subtle and bold, and that thou askest the meaning of these similitudes. But because thou still persistest, I will unfold to thee this parable which then desireth that thou mayest make it known unto all men. So, and that's the purpose of this book. You know, he's telling Hermes in several places, you ain't even worthy to hear this information, but it's necessary to show it to you so that the book can be written. Yeah, I think the um, the lady had told him that information as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So apparently he wasn't that great a guy as he was a good a writer. Mm -hmm. Here therefore saith he and understand, the form before mentioned denotes the whole earth. The Lord of the form is he who created and finished all things and gave virtue unto them. Yeah. So now this is saying the the Lord of the farm is he who created all things. Right. The right? father. Yes. Who, so the, who we would call the father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the ultimate, the highest being. Mm -hmm. um, and then he says the farm is the earth. Right. right. Mm -hmm. His son is the Holy Spirit. The servant is the son of God. The vineyard is the people whom he saves. The stakes are the messengers which are set over them by the Lord to support his people. The weeds that are plucked up out of the vineyard are the sins which the servants of God had committed. So you have to you have to paint this picture according to the way he wants us to here. Mm -hmm. right? and it's a little bit confusing if somebody were to show you this verse only. You know, there's a lot of people arguing. They go, oh, how the son is the Holy Spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. The son and the Holy Spirit at the same thing. You no, know, for the sake of the parable. Is laid out like yeah. this. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. mm -hmm. So you remember that the son never entered the garden. Right. The son was there with the creator, with our father, and, you know, having a meeting about the son or the servant who was in the garden. Right. The son was with the father and the, um, the friends. Right. So, and we will see, you know, in a few verses later what, who the friends are. So the son... The Holy Spirit and the servant, which is the son of God, are different. Mm -hmm. And then he says that the vineyard is the people whom he saves. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is not all of humanity, though. It says just the people that he saves. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So and I guess those outside of this particular vineyard would desire to be in this vineyard if they want to be saved. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he says the stakes are the messengers which are set in over them by the Lord. So these are angels. Right. So these will be the fence poles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's what a stake is. Mm -hmm. Then it says um, the weeds that are plucked up out of the vineyard are the sins which the servants of God have committed. Right. So what is the fence? I don't see uh, the fence. The fence, I think in the um, audio, the fence is the stake. So instead of stakes, they said fence. fence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but the stakes will be the fence poles. So mm -hmm. the the I guess the the fence itself will be the word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it will be the will be the scripture itself or something like that. All right. Well, let's go on. The food which he sent him from his supper are the commands which he gave to his people by his son. The friends whom he called to counsel with him are the holy angels whom he first created. The absence of the master of the household is the time that remains until his coming. Yeah. So 
Like I said, this is very deep stuff when you compare it to what you find in the keys of Enoch. This timing that he's talking about is related to the timing of the Shekinah glory. Hmm. It's related to the timing of the star systems, actually. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, six, seven, or 8,000 years of human history all fit along in that. But basically what it's talking about is his, um, the advents. Okay. Well, the, you think, okay, the first time that the word came was back in the garden with Adam. Mm -hmm. The next time would have been with Moses when we got the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. The next time he came would have been with the Messiah. Right. And then this will be the third time the third coming all of this are playing into this period of time that he's that he's talking about here. okay mm -hmm. but backing up there he says that the friends those who he was in council with those are the holy angels that was first created wow. that reminds you of the book of genesis mm -hmm. when he was you know asking him you know should we create man let us make man let us make man so he's talking about those original angels mm -hmm. these are actually the the lords over this creation over humanity, over humanity. They, they're kind of like the father's police officers, mm -hmm. you know, sit here to make to keep us in order. Mm -hmm. Then he says the food, which you sent is the commands or the commandments, right? Right. He says commands and it could be talking about the shepherd of Hermes commands or the mandates, mm -hmm. but he could very well be talking about all of the laws and the laws, rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then it says, the absence of the master of the household is the time that remains until his coming. And remember, the um, after the master gave the servant the orders, he went away into a foreign land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and that's the period that we've been in for so many thousands of years, um, basically waiting for these, uh, um, these alignments. I had this picture up I was going to show you guys at the beginning. Um, kind of you know where we started from when Stacy took over the Shepherd of Hermes mm -hmm. it was because I had started studying the third testament of the Bible and you know Stacy was gonna hang back and teach the <laughs> Shepherd of Hermes. I dropped the ball. Yeah a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but now you know we are actually moving on to the keys of Enoch and trying to figure this thing out. Mm. Turns out it is a uh, a computer, I saw Father's timepiece, these air shafts that they call them are actually pointing to celestials. Mm -hmm. And when they line up at a certain time, then we can start to see, you know, what he's talking about, about this time period that he is to return. So all of this goes together. It all goes together. Wow. It's the, from Genesis to the keys of Enoch, Shepherd and the Hermes in the middle, everything is all related mm. Mm. all right let's go on okay 48 I said unto him sir all these things are very excellent and wonderful and good but continued I could I or any other man besides though never so wise have understood these things no you never would have got that I mean even after reading the explanation you have to go back and read it mm -hmm, again to, mm -hmm. to, to, to really see what he's saying there Wherefore now, sir, tell me what I ask. He replied, Ask me what thou wilt. Why said I, is the son of God in this parable? Put in the place of a servant. Yeah. So he's, he's like, this is our Messiah. You right. know, this is the, the, the father made flesh, the word made flesh. Mm -hmm. Why is he put in this, in this garden like a slave? Mm -hmm. Harkin said he, the son of God is not put in the condition of a servant. But in great power and authority, I said unto him, how, sir, I understand it not. So the Messiah is the authority yeah. over the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, from there, you can start to make a connection with Michael. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we understand Michael to also be the angel over the covenant responsible for protecting this vineyard that we're speaking about here, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of people who believe that the Messiah and Michael have a, a greater relationship than we've been taught. And here's a, here's yet another connection, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, they, they seem to have the same roles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because said he, the son set his messengers over those whom the father delivered unto him. 
to keep every one of them. But he himself labored very much and suffered much that he might blot out their offenses. So you putting some of this together, you have the son of God, who is the Messiah, who is the word made flesh, mm -hmm. who was put over the fencing in of this vineyard. Mm -hmm. But then you have him going further to actually blot out the the sins. Mm -hmm. So this will be him putting his blood on the cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dying on the cross for us. Mm -hmm. And that goes on with the uh, next verse. Well, before we go on, we got to think about that because, you know, we are a type of son of God in this parable. Mm -hmm. It's deeper than just talking about the Messiah. It's also talking about us, too, mm -hmm. and how we are expected to do the work in this vineyard. Yeah. The Messiah's bearing of the cross would have, is something we have to look forward to. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, as we... I, I, I mean, if, if you think about it, you have the, all, us as servants being put in the vineyard, and we're given a responsibility. But if we, you know, decide to go higher than that, then, you know, we can expect, you know, this... Just the weight of this cross to get bigger and greater, mm -hmm. but the heavier and the more load that we carry, the more pleasing we will be found in the eyes of our Father. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. For no vineyard can be digged without much labor and pain. Wherefore, having blotted out the sins of his people, he showed to them the path of life, giving them the law which he had received of the Father. So here you have our Messiah blotting out our sins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this was extra work that he didn't necessarily have to do to get his liberty. Right. But, you know, he went above that for all of us to get to get liberty. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm you see said he that he is the Lord of his people, having received all power from his father. But why the Lord did take his son into counsel about dividing the inheritance and the good angels here now. So the son we learned was the Holy Spirit. The Son is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and uh, at least the Son in this parable. Mm -hmm. um, so he's going to talk to the Holy Spirit to find out what he's going to do with this, with the Son of God. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the, what we're finding out is um, the Son of God is the flesh, and the Son is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That Holy Spirit, which was created, first of all, he placed into the body in which God should dwell, namely in the chosen body, as it seemed good to him. This body, therefore, into which the Holy Spirit was bought, served that spirit, walking rightly and purely in modesty, nor ever defiled that spirit. I read in the scripture one time, and I, I, I wish I could find it now, um, where the Messiah the person, the fleshly being walking around sensed that he was the son of God as if there was some question in his own mind as if it, as if the information had to come through intuition mm -hmm. that, so that's what he's talking about here, yeah. where the body was chosen. Yeah, you know, we go, we hear about it and it's so great how it, how this all comes together throughout, you know, the canonized books and we're finding it out through the testament, the third testament, also how um, our bodies are chosen. Mm -hmm. You know, how we, um, our spirit goes out and finds a body. Mm -hmm. And it, it implants itself, for lack of a better word, into that body. And this is what it's saying. The Holy Spirit, the body of the Messiah was chosen. The spirit went out and chose that body to go into. And it goes on to tell us how, because this body um, submitted itself to the Holy Spirit, how the servant submitted itself to the Father, now the um, the servant, which is the body, is rewarded. Does that make sense? Am I, are you no, go ahead. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm, I'm only when I edit it. Go ahead. <laughs> mm -hmm. So... Go, going on down to 55, it's saying, Seeing therefore the body at all times obeyed the Holy Spirit and labored rightly and chastened with it, nor faltered at any time. The body being wearied, conversed in deeds or vilely, but being mightily approved to God with the Holy Spirit was accepted by him. I never understood. Why would the son be okay with this servant being a joint heir with him? 
Mm-hmm. But the servant, we got to remember, is the body, is our flesh. I'm going to say it's the flesh. Mm-hmm. And the son is the Holy Spirit. The, throughout the Third Testament, it, te- it tells us that the body, the flesh, and the spirit must come together in order to harmonize for us to move on to the next step. So what this, I believe, in Shepherd's Harmonies is telling us that the flesh and the spirit came together. They became joint heirs together in order for us to move on into the next step. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. It's the marriage supper. Right. Right. And so... Here it is, I guess, explaining another uh, another way of looking at this is that it's explaining how this marriage supper works and why it works. Mm-hmm. Because what we're learning here is that it's necessary not only to keep the law, do the initial commandments, but we have to go above and beyond. Right. We have mm-hmm. to do something mm-hmm. to um, to help one another. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For such a stop course, please God, because he was not defiled in the earth, keeping the Holy Spirit. He called, therefore, to counsel his son and the good angels that there might be some place of standing given to this body, which had served the Holy Spirit without blame, lest it should seem to have lost its reward of its service. So so the flesh has to receive a reward right. for having been subject to this law. Yeah, because the flesh, it came together with the Messiah. The flesh came together with the Holy Spirit. It made itself subject to everything um, that the Messiah did. He was perfect on the earth. And it came together. Now the Father is about to give the flesh a reward because it submitted itself to the Spirit, which is the Son. And um, it goes on to talk about that. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go on. 57. For every pure body shall receive its reward that is found without spot in which the Holy Spirit has it been appointed to dwell. And thus you have the exposition of this parable also. So we can sometimes say, you know, we sometimes say that our flesh is just filthy, you know, and, but here it's telling us that if we allow our flesh to submit itself to the spirit, which is a hot, more higher power. I mean, the son was more, um, excellent than the servant then we will have a reward our flesh will have a reward as well i think it's telling us that you know our flesh is is important too our flesh has to work with our spirit i mean because you can't have a flesh that's telling you one thing and your spirit is telling you another they have to according to the third testament they have to harmonize they have to come together in order to do this thing yeah they they are both necessary the flesh i always like to use it the analogy, the flesh is kind of like the tank or the tractor or the 18 wheeler. You know, it's more like a, a mechanized force, but that has to have some intelligence behind it. Mm-hmm. And so that's where our spirit comes in as the more intellectual to actually drive us to do the Lord's work. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if we don't have the, the, the body, we can't do the Lord's work. You know, right. our work is for humanity, and we can't do much as ghosts trying to, you know, get stuff done. Um, and that's what this chapter, this section, this, this part of this chapter is all about, is protecting our bodies, like you say, protecting them because they're necessary. Cleaning our bodies, not defiling them, right? Mm-hmm. All right, let's go on. Sir said, I, I now understand your meaning since I have heard this exposition. Hearken, Father, said he, keep this thy body clean and pure, that the spirit which shall dwell in it may bear witness unto it and be judged to have been with thee. Now, so it's important to understand how, where this cleanliness comes from. Mm-hmm. You know, what kind of cleanliness are we talking about? Yeah, he's not talking about um, water and soap. What, well, what is he talking about then? I'm going to um, say that he's talking about Isaiah 58. Well, or the all all of the law. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you have to remember that's what the covenant is all about. Mm-hmm. It's about staying clean. Yeah. Spiritually mm-hmm. clean as well as materialistically clean. Mm-hmm. Even socially clean as it tells us how to interact with our brothers right. and neighbors. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, and anything we do to break the law. 
just about anything we do to break the law is a materialistic thing and it has an effect on our bodies. Yeah, it defiles us. If we don't keep the Sabbath day right. or any of the feast days um, because, you know, they're related to the spirit. And you want to find out you can't affect the body without affecting the spirit. And you can't affect the spirit without affecting the body. They go hand in hand. Right. Also take heed that it be not instilled into thy mind that this body perishes and thou abuse it at any lust. For if thou shalt defile thy body, thou shalt also at the same time defile the Holy Spirit. And if thou shalt defile the Holy Spirit, thou shalt not live. That's yeah. something you just said about yeah. how we uh, they work hand in hand. Yeah, even after this, this time period that we're in now, we're waiting for our Father to return, waiting for the kingdom of heaven. But after the kingdom of heaven, our bodies are still important mm -hmm. because from what I understand, we live longer than... Huma the, the humanity has a, a chance to live longer like they did before the days of the flood back there with Noah. And, you know, but if your body is deteriorated, you're going to have a hard time, right. you know. Yeah. So I believe what it's telling us that, you know, we have to take care of our bodies mm -hmm. as well as our spirit, uh, because both of them are important. I mean, you just can't say, well... You know, I'm not going to take care of my body. I'm just going to um, take care of my spirit. I'm just going to, you know, study and read and all this other stuff. No, he's telling us now that our body is important. And like you said, we're going to need or even desire healthy bodies um, on the other side. Mm -hmm. It's motive force for our spirit. So. Right. And I said, what if thou through ignorance, this should have already been committed before a man heard these words? How shall he attain unto salvation who has thus defiled his body? So if you are waking up and you find out that you've already done, you know, damage to your body, how are you? What are you going to do? Or defiled it means, you know, you've done unclean things. Now, yeah, well. You haven't and, kept the law. Is that right. what it's saying? Now, for that, it's easy. To, it's real easy to understand because we understand Passover and baptism. Right. How that gives us a clean slate as far as our spirit is concerned. Mm -hmm. Even in the book of James, it talks about, you know, if one is sick and we find out that um, sickness is related to sin. So if one is sick amongst us, we're asked to bring the priest in or the elect in to put oil on a person, which is a way of purifying mm -hmm. an individual. So as far as breaking the laws are concerned and, you know, and defiling our body, we we have a built in solution, a ready made solution that we learned in the in the um New Testament that all we had to do was to get baptized to, to to get forgiveness of all of our previous sins and then we go through Passover where we are cleansed of our sins every year kind of like a booster shot but what about the physical ailments what about uh, diseases of Egypt what about uh, blindness what mm -hmm. about you know loss of hearing right I think that's related to what we hear about how we're supposed to get healed I think mm -hmm. it's talking about the healing mm -hmm. part of the new uh covenant the kingdom of heaven new jerusalem is this supposed to be a worldwide healing of humanity and i think that's what this is pointing to mm -hmm. in 61 he says he replied as for men's formal actions which through ignorance they have committed god only can afford a remedy unto them for all the power belongeth unto him yeah see now that's talking about passover mm -hmm. that's talking about that mm -hmm. um and and baptism it's important to to um, be clean spiritually, and that's the way to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now guard thyself, and seeing God is almighty and merciful, he will grant a remedy to what thou hast formerly done amiss, if for the time to come thou shalt not defile thy body and spirit. Yeah, so if we basically stop sinning. Yeah, he's telling us to stop doing it now. Then our bodies will be purified and, right. and mm -hmm. put back where they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. For they are companions together, and the one cannot be defiled, but the other will be so too. Keep therefore both of them pure, and thou shalt live unto God. Yeah, so yes, our bodies are are extremely important um, to carry out our life mission. Right. And if we ever want to go on to the higher mansions, we're going to have to get those missions done. So we need to take care of our bodies in order to get those missions done. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I learned something. All right. I learned something. Um, it brings together the Third Testament 
once again, it proves that, you know, for those naysayers, that the third testament, you know, is the true word of God, how all of this just falls in together about how our spirit and our body must must come together in order for us to do greater works. And I think, you know, this lesson um, just shows that as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up there. Yeah. Um, once again, we'd like to say for you guys to check out the playlist of the previous classes we've done. And, you know, I hope somebody got something out of this if, class. Yeah, and if you did, let's chat about it down in the comment section. Mm-hmm. And I'll see you there. Shalom.